Please mute your microphone. I'm trying to uh, mute the microphone so we are getting feedback. Okay, uh, when we have a, a break, our mute. Yes. Uh, those people who are giving us the feedback. Um, Julius. First of all, when I'm done. Bambare, you are disorganizing our class. Okay, I hope now uh, we can proceed if Derek is out of the way. I will proceed with the next example. That is a poster. So I was suggesting that after looking at the poster, you get a poster and see if you can catalog it. Area O, content form term is image and then the content qualification term is still because it doesn't move. Bread and puppet is title proper. Our domestic resurrection circus 1987 is other title. This is supposed to be capitalized. And please take note of the punctuation devices. Leave a space, uh, colon space before giving the other title. And then there's a second other title. You will notice that whatever comes after this is another other title, August 8th and 9th in Glover. So we have an example of a poster in the chart to other titles. No edition. Uh, posters don't have scales. So that is why this is blank. The rest of the areas apply area four. Uh, West Back, Vermont is the place of publishing the poster. And it is in square brackets because it wasn't appearing on the poster. Then the name of the publisher is also in square brackets. Because normally posters don't have the, this, this detail on them. But they are is given. For instance, I don't need to go to to library school to know that the posters I see in Kampala uh, for the presidential candidates were published in 2020. So that information might not appear on the poster, but from your current affairs, you will determine that. Physical description. Still like maps and globes, we mentioned the number of posters. So one poster, and the poster is an illustration that is by default. If you are cataloging a poster and then you don't mention that it is an illustration, that, 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 then that will be a big omission. And lastly, we provide uh, the dimension. Still, 
height and width. And the, unlike the map, you will don't normally fold the posters because in, in that way you will be destroying them. Other areas not applicable, but of course, in we can have a tracing and then give subjects to the posters. Next is time for you to ask uh, questions about uh, area O. I'm done with the presentation on the media type. Uh, Edward says there's some noise I can't hear, please. I think that noise was your side. So if you have any questions, please type the question. And then I respond to whatever question you have. So anybody with a question, please uh, submit your question in the chat. That ends area O. I'm about to share what we are to cover next. Um, uh, Julius is asking, is there a specific way of folding or it depends on me? Now, the maps come with the provision of the lines where they can be folded from. Just like the travel maps or the tourist maps, which you fold and then it becomes uh, portable. So it is not that you will create the folding by yourselves. Now, please reteach about graphic poster cataloging. Uh, number sub Brenda and everyone uh, the activity we shall perform after today is for you to get a poster and then prepare the main entry. When you prepare the main entry, in our next meeting, I'll give you an opportunity to share your screens and we see first the poster and then to the main entry you prepared and then I'll be able to repeat uh, the poster cataloging when you have had a chance to try it out. So that is the response I can give at the moment. Why? I don't have a poster with me uh, because it will involve, for instance, searching for one online, which I can also try and I've tried to go online. I get um, to share something which is online. I hope I will not just put off uh, what we are doing now. So I'm online. I hope everybody can see uh, my screen. And I want to search uh, in Google Images. I'll say Achagu Lanyi Costa. Wonderful. Uh, there are a number of them. I'll pick the first one. And I'll need to make it so big uh, for everybody to see. Uh, can you see my screen? Uh, there is this on the right. I think it is big enough. Uh, I've not saved it on my PC, otherwise we'll get one which covers the whole screen for clarity, but I believe everybody can see this. 
the first task is to provide area O. But before that, where will the main entry go? The main entry goes under the person who took this poster. The one who published the poster. And we cannot get that information from here. It means we have to use other sources to know who published the poster. Area O, we shall note that it is an image. And then in parathensis, we mention that it is. We shall mention that it is what? I don't get any response. I'm not getting any response. When it is an image, the content qualification term is still. So use this example of this poster. And then we shall discuss more when we next meet. It means you will, you will even have done some research to know who published this. Where was it published from? I believe that is obvious. It must have been published in Kampala, but we need to confirm all those details. So I'll stop sharing this and then see the next question. Oh, someone had already told us the content qualification term is uh, still. So it looks like that will end that area of business. I'll move to the next one, which is area one. And that we shall do in the next uh, 50 or so minutes. So area one is what we shall be looking at next. And all I'm doing is getting uh, the window where I kept uh, details of area one. I have many windows which are open and I need, okay, I'll start with sharing the, uh, the post outline. So this is where we are. We are done with the media type under area O. I want us to look at area one, title and statement of responsibility. And um, this, uh, can you see my screen? I need confirmation if you are able to see my screen. Can you see my screen? Okay, I'll first stop the sharing. Uh, let me first answer this. Do we put COL when cataloging a poster or we use EL? Uh, I think we shall need to indicate that it is colored also. So that is C-O-L dot E-L dot. I've answered that. So I go back to share my screen uh, where we shall look at uh, the first area. And this is something which takes us to the very beginning of what we have been studying since semester one. And uh, I believe it will not take a lot of our time. And this is picked from the general rules. How do we organize our entries? The description is divided into the following areas. The first area is area O, which is not indicated here. It is after area O that we go to the title and statement of responsibility, edition area, material specific details area, 
this is area three which is new it is under this area that we describe uh, periodicals cartographic materials electronic resources all those we handle in area three so i want to handle the first area area one area two and then that will lead us to area three the rest of the areas we handle in a similar way with the exception of the physical description area each of the above areas is divided into a number of elements that we have practiced the punctuation devices that we use precede each area other than the first area or each occurrence of a note or standard number by a full stop space that space it is this punctuation device by a full stop space dash space so when we are starting a new area that is the punctuation device we use unless when we are dealing with the first area then precede each mark of prescribed punctuation by a space and follow it by a space it means that whatever punctuation device we use, we must start with a space and then follow it by a space, except the comma. Yesterday, I emphasized that for the comma, we don't leave a space before it. Likewise, for a full stop, we shall not leave a space before it, the hyphen, and also the opening and closing parentheses and square brackets. The comma, full stop, hyphen, and closing parentheses and square brackets are not preceded by a space. In other words, when we are when we are denoting those devices, we don't uh, leave a space. In other words, the comma, full stop hyphen and closing parentheses and square brackets are not preceded. The preceding is started by space. The hyphen and opening parentheses and square brackets are not followed by space. So this is to emphasize the punctuation we use and whether we leave spaces or not. Precede the first element of each area other than the first area or the first element of an area beginning a paragraph by a full stop space dash space i'm repeating exactly what we saw at the beginning and then when the element is not present in the description precede the first element that is present by a full stop space dash in other words if we do not have uh, roman pages it means we would go to the Arabic pages, but if we are writing the Arabic pages and not starting a new paragraph, then we would use uh, a full stop space dash space. Indicate an interpolation by enclosing it in square brackets. Interpolation means anything we have added that is not in the chief source of information. For instance, on Chagulanyi's poster, if we add that it was published in 2020, that is an interpolation, and therefore we shall enclose it in square brackets. Indicate the omission of part of an element by the mark of omission. If we are omitting something in our entry for instance if the title proper is too long when we omit some words we use the mark of omission which is a space full stop space full stop space full stop space so this is the mark of omission not dashes but it is full stops and three of them precede and follow the mark of omission by space so there is a space there, and then there is a space after the last one. 
omit any area or element that does not apply in describing an individual item. Also omit its prescribed preceding or enclosing punctuation. Do not indicate the omission of one area or element by the mark of omission. If a poster does not have an addition, don't again use this omission mark to show that you have omitted that area. Next, when adjacent elements within one area are to be enclosed in square brackets, enclose them in one set of square brackets unless one of the elements is a GMD. This one does not apply anymore. So I have an example here. This does not apply, so I will not use it. But Kampala MK Publishers 2010, this square bracket means that Kampala was in its own set of square brackets there. MK Publishers add its own square brackets, and then 2010, its own square bracket. But because all these elements, number one, they're in the same area, number two, they are next to each other. In other words, they are adjacent. We shall not use three sets of square brackets. We shall use only one set. So this is how we shall handle this. If I add a blackboard, I'll first give the three sets and then tell you that we don't use the three sets, but we use one single set uh, to transcribe that information. I have another example which is different. When adjacent elements are in different areas, like this is addition area, and then this ginger in is in the publication distribution area. When adjacent elements live alone, they are next to each other, are in different areas, enclose each element in a set of square brackets. So you'll notice that the addition has its own set and the ginger has its own set, live alone, they are next to each other but they are in different areas. So this is how we handle that. When adjacent elements are in different areas, enclose each element in a set of square brackets. And this is the example which illustrates this. In accuracies, we have situations where we get publications, but there, there, there are details which are not accurate. For instance, if someone misspells the author's name, how do we handle? Transcribe an inaccuracy or a misspelled word as it appears in the item. Follow such an inaccuracy either by seek in square brackets or by IE and the correction written within square brackets. Supply a missing letter or letters in square brackets. Examples. In the first example, the word music is misspelled. The rules state that we shall write that word the way it was misspelled. And one option is for us after the word to put the word sick in square brackets. It doesn't mean that the word is sick, but that is how we handle, that is one way. I uh, missed it out, so that is why you see it is appearing at the top, but should be on the same line. In the second example, the word central from central broadcasting service is misspelled. So just like in the first example, we would put the word sick after the misspelled word. So that is one way of handling in naturalists. But in the next example, Pearl of Africa, the word Africa is misspelled. We shall write it the way it was misspelled, but immediately after it, in square brackets, we shall put IE 
and the correct spelling. I've had the students in, in an exam asking, but sir, the word is misspelled. And then I'll answer, it is not misspelled. It would mean I was testing you to see if you know how to uh, transcribe that detail. And then the last example says what you should know about marriage and why. The author, it is uh, the name sent exam. And in this example, it means whoever wrote sent name had left out the T. The T has been provided, but since it is, wasn't there, we put it in square brackets. So that is how we handle what we call in natural sense. I want to first uh, pause and then receive questions if there is any. I'm in the chat, so please. If you have questions, ask using the chat. Questions on inaccuracies is what I'm receiving before we proceed. For both. I can see you loud and clear. Any question? Atene is asking, when it is a letter, what do you do? Give, uh, Atene, give an example. <laughs> for instance, uh, for instance, the word Retake. Now, assuming the word that we were writing was retake, you will notice that uh, the K is missing. This is how we shall transcribe it. Whoever is speaking, please note that you are loud and clear. We can hear your conversation. Um, I'd already answered the, uh, if it is a book, they have missed out one O. Ah, so I think I've answered that one. Any other question? Now I get a card, do the examples make it clear now? Okay. Uh, now I get a card says it is okay. Um, if it is okay, it means I don't need to add the sugar, we continue. Can we proceed? If you say we proceed to type uh, two, and then we continue. If you can hear me and everything is okay, type two. Okay, five twos are enough. So, hey, everybody wants to proceed. <laughs> And that is a good sign that we should never go back to face to face. Uh, we should continue with the Zoom. Now I start looking at area one. Remember, I started with the punctuation, but those punctuations will still be handled as we go along. Area number one in a description is the title and statement of responsibility area. And it has all these elements except 1.1C. The GMD that you see 
is what was replaced with the area also. This you just delete. And when you delete this, it means somewhere you have area O, which we have so far handled. So the title and statement of responsibility area as the title proper, parallel title, other title and statement of responsibility. But I'll start by talking about the punctuations we used. Precede the title of a supplemental section by a full stop. We have not seen this example. Maybe we shall see some. Ignore at the next line. GMD does not apply anymore. Precede each parallel title by an equal sign. I'll give examples of parallel titles and you'll see the equal signs. Precede each unit of other title information by a colon. Even today we saw other titles and we were starting that information with a colon. Precede the first statement of responsibility by diagonal slash. That is the forward slash. Whenever we are giving the author's name, that is the punctuation we use. Precede each statement of responsibility by semicolon. We have not had examples of this, but for instance, we have a book written by an author but there is also an editor. So the editor will be the subsequent statement of responsibility. So after giving the author, when we are giving the editor's name, we use a semicolon. Of course, there is a space before and a space after. That is how we shall handle the punctuations in area one. Where do we get this information that we use to record the title? sources of information. Information recorded in this area is taken from the chief source of information from the material to which this item being described belongs. In other words, if we are recording the title, the chief source of information of the title is the title page. But if we get information from any other source, then enclose that information in square brackets. So if you are watching or you have a DVD, remember these DVDs you burn, or you don't photocopy the DVDs, you burn them. And you don't burn them with fire. Mm -hmm. But when you make copies of DVDs, normally there is no casing. In other words, there is nothing that shows the title. You will notice that uh, those people who man those video libraries, they write there using a marker. So in case you have one and there's nothing that was transcribed, and then later you preview the DVD, and then you realize uh, the, 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 the whatever uh, that uh, DVD is uh, uh, titled uh, The Last uh, Queen. So it means that title, the last queen, you will have to enclose it in square brackets. That is what this last statement means. How do we handle the title proper? In our core or in Mark 21, when we are recording the title proper, it has to go in subfield A. Subfield A, the tag which is 245. Please mute your audio. In machine readable cataloging, the field where we record the title proper is that field 245. Yesterday we looked at tag two and we looked for where we put the title. It was tag two, four, five. And the title proper, that one goes in subfield A. It would mean subfield B is for parallel title. Subfield C 
other title. So transcribe the title proper exactly as wording, order, and spelling, but not necessarily as to punctuation and capitalization. So when we are recording the title proper, we record it exactly as it was written, give it in the same order and spelling, but we shall not follow the punctuation and capitalization. For instance, if the title proper is in capital letters, for us, we shall not follow that. We shall just capitalize the first word. And the way do we get that authority? We capitalize according to Appendix A of the Anglo-American Cataloging Rules. So whatever we do, we follow the rules. And within those rules, there is an Appendix A which deals with capitalizing. Capitalize the first word of title proper. So if you have been wondering why for each title of a publication, the first letter is capitalized, it is because of this instruction. Capitalize the first word of title proper. An alternative title, that is other title or parallel title. So the title proper, other title, and the parallel title must be capitalized. And if you remember the examples we looked at today when I was explaining area O, I mentioned for some of the other titles that we have to edit and capitalize. Why? The rules said so. And then further they tell us capitalize other words, including the first word of each element of other title information. And we have examples here. These are title propers. The first one, Adventures of Oliver Twist. You notice this is the first word, Adventures. The A is capital. Oliver Twist is a name. That is why the O and the T is capitalized. The next example, Coming to America. The C is capital and the A is capitalized in the country name. Next example, introduction to cataloging theory. In this one, is only the I which is capitalized. The rest are small. La Tomenta, the L is capital, the rest are small. And then I give an example here. I'm getting feedback from um, Veronica Namatovu, mute your microphone. Please, everybody should mute and proceed. If you don't know how to mute, Veronica, if you are using a phone, uh, get a cup of water, drop the phone in there, it will mute. I proceed. I have an example here. Uh, I've indicated. Number uh, uh, of his local water to mute. I'll first of all look at what you have in the chat. If I proceed, I see there are five communications, but let me first complete. Um, in this example, what or where I'm pointing, if you have your title page reading this in that format, feeling mad, feeling sad, feeling bad, feeling glad. When we are writing this in our entry, this is how we shall write it. Feeling mad, we shall apply a comma, feeling sad, comma, feeling bad, comma, feeling glad. So you will notice that there were no commas, but we have introduced the commas because we can't read this title 
in this way. Feeling mad, feeling sad, feeling bad, feeling glad. That is not the way uh, we would communicate. We pause, and whereas on the title page, the pausing was done by putting each statement on its own line. For us, in our entry, we shall use the commas to indicate that it is pausing. Eh? You would read feeling mad, feeling sad, feeling bad, feeling glad, but not continuously feeling mad, feeling sad, feeling bad, feeling glad. So that is how we transcribe uh, such a title. Then further still, words or phrases which serve as introduction to the title, such as welcome to or fox presents are not transcribed as part of the title proper i have an example here and website title is welcome to the official website of italy we shall not capture the welcome to we shall transcribe as the official website of italy we shall not use the omission mark there if the title proper as given in the chief source of information includes the punctuation marks, that omission mark or the square bracket, we shall replace this omission mark by a dash and this square bracket, we shall replace it with the parathensis respectively. So if you have a title proper, which is as this, don't transcribe this replace it with a dash if the title proper as square bracket don't transcribe this you put para fences <coughs> notice that i'm moving fast yes i think this is something which is straightforward if the title proper is not taken from the chief source of information give the source of the title in a note for instance, our DVD title was not taken from the title page for that matter. Remember, films don't have title pages, but there is that information which appears at the beginning of the film. What we'll do, we'll put in the note area where we got our title from. For instance, in, this is appearing in the note, we'll say title from container or title from descriptive insert. That is if uh, the video had uh, a leaflet which was inserted, just like they normally do in town. If the title proper includes a statement of responsibility or the name of the publisher, distributor, and the statement or name is an integral part of the title proper, transcribe it as part of the title proper. In this first example, Arrow's Librarian's Grocery, we even have it in the library. You will notice that this grocery was compiled by Arrow. So this is a statement of responsibility which is appearing in the title proper. And according to the rules, we shall transcribe it as part of the title proper. Then another example. Mangani's a more beautiful you in seven days. You will notice that Mangen is the author, but is also appearing in the title proper. If the title proper consists solely of the name of a person or body, <laughs> response of the item transcribe such a name as the title proper. We shall get books where the title proper is indeed <laughs> someone's name, Nobat Mao, Nelson Mandela. So that is how we shall transcribe it. I, I get, I'm getting a, a lot of feedback and um, I would request that uh, you mute if uh, you are the source of that feedback. Um, 
abridge a long title proper only if this can be done without loss of essential information. Never omit any of the first five words of the title proper. In other words, if you are omitting any words in the title proper, never ever omit uh, the first five words. Indicate omissions by the mark of omission. And I have an example hearing before the committee on Chogam funds disbursed to J and M Hotel second session. You will notice that this title proper was continuing, but I omitted the other words using the omission mark, which is the three dots, the space at the beginning and the space after the last full stop. Supply a title proper for an item lacking a chief source of information from the rest of the item or a reference source. If a book does not have a title page, assuming it was plucked off, but it has a spine with the title, then you can get that title proper from the spine of the book. So we supply a title proper for an item lacking a chief source of information from the rest of the item or a reference source or elsewhere. If no title can be found in any source, devise a brief descriptive title, enclose such a supplied or devised title in a square bracket. I have a photograph. Assuming I have a photograph of Tomokonde. Normally photographs don't have titles written in the photograph. So as a cataloger, you would provide an appropriate descriptive title. If it was a photograph of the Uganda Museum, then my title of the photograph would be photograph of Uganda Museum. Take an example of this image you are seeing where I'm pointing. Can someone give us a title for this image? I believe you are seeing where my cursor is pointing. Using the chart, provide an appropriate title proper for that image. And then I'll check and see if people are following. I'll stop the share. And then in the chat, we see what you have provided. Um, uh, Alan, sorry with your network. Um, Musenguzi right on both sides of the paper. Is that what you have provided for the image I was pointing at? Uh, anyone who has come up with an appropriate title of this image or of my image? Because there is none provided, can you provide the title proper? It seems people are not following. Okay, for me, I'm going to provide uh, a title proper for Daniel's picture I'm seeing. And uh, I'll just say that uh, those who are not seeing an image at all, it means you don't have a video on your machines. Uh, but I'm giving a title proper for Daniel, Daniel's photo, which is Sonywa at Materere. That is what I've provided. So something similar to that. So those, I know some of you can't see the images because of the devices you are using. We proceed. I go back to what we were sharing. That is how we shall handle title proper. 
general material designation does not apply anymore. So please, we shall ignore that. Why? It is because it was replaced with area O. So all that ignore until we get to parallel titles. So allow me uh, to stop at parallel titles. This is where we shall begin from. But note that title proper was subfield A. Parallel titles is subfield B. But it is still under tag 245 uh, under machinery level cataloging. So when you go back to core to catalog any publication, take note of the subfield. Subfield A is for title proper, subfield B is for parallel titles. So I'll begin from here tomorrow. If it is okay with you, I'll unshare that. And then I need your comments in the chat. Um, please, I need the feedback. Feedback for today's lecture. Use the chat room. In case you had challenges, in case there is anything uh, that was a problem, please give uh, that feedback to us in the chat room. My, uh, my concern is that today only 33, only 33 attended as of now. So it means there is a problem. I'm waiting for feedback from you. Alan, me inclusive, what does that mean? For books without a cover and a spine, where else can we get the title proper? Brian, uh, those books without cover and spine don't exist in a bookshop. But in case you come across any one of them, you read the introduction or the preface, and then you provide with a descriptive title proper. I hope that uh, makes it clear. Any other question or bot? You look like you are enjoying seeing yourself, Mr. Bot. Any question? <laughs> yes. No, mine is just <laughs> supplement that uh, at least a little time I've, uh, I've been online, I've tried to pick. Hey, yeah. is it because you are using a common 20? <laughs> My internet is unstable. So I was asking <laughs> a, a bot if he was using a common 20. That is why things are clear now. Uh, we <laughs> overweighted for the link, and I think Sam gave up. My request mm. is you forward for us the link earlier, sir. Uh, um, um, Vincent, I send the link to your class rep on their email, and I can't tell how fast they sent the link. So, and the reason is I don't have a phone uh, to access your WhatsApp group. Otherwise, I would have been doing it instantly. So, since Julius and uh, uh, Derek are listening, and of course, I've also been using Esther's email, they should 
I send you the link early enough. So today, just after this, I'm going to send the link to their email. Then Mbaguta, if the book is in another language, it is Chinese. How do you transcribe it? And normally, we do not have such books, but it would imply that you also transcribe everything in Chinese. For the last example, how do we transcribe barrier three? What do you mean by last example? Uh, was it the map or you are talking about the poster? Posters do not have details that we put in area three. So posters don't have area three. So we transcribe nothing in area three for posters. Uh, Cove seeing clarity on movies. Um, if we are cataloging a movie, then area O will mention that it is a video or motion picture. So we need to go back to that. Uh, when I start area three, I'll give you an example of a movie such that it will be more clear. Why even the physical description area, the way we transcribe it changes. So we even mention the minutes of the movie. We don't mention the pages because it does not apply. And then we shall also mention the size of the DVD or disc or of the cassette if you are using a film reel. So that one now, you remind me, I clarify by giving you an example tomorrow. Any more questions? We have five more minutes. Uh, to wind up this lecture. Thanks for attending. And uh, if you have challenges, I've had similar challenges. The internet was breaking down. That one is beyond us. Uh, lack of devices to use. Just like we were studying face to face, I depend on the facilities provided by the university. I'm using the office desktop. That is why I cannot conduct uh, the lectures outside working hours. Uh, please send us the recording for these lectures. Today I realized that I paused the recording, but what was captured, I'll send. Uh, the first part of it was missing. I'll indeed send uh, those recordings. That is if they are clear. And then thank you, sir, on that. And this work, Assessable on Mwere. Uh, today's session, I will see if uh, the recording is OK, because I first preview it. If there is a lot of noise and not content, then I don't share such. But hopefully, today's will be fine. I'll share. Uh, if there are no questions, uh, you can say goodbye by typing zero. And then later I'll end. One zero is enough. Appeal, you have failed the question. Goodbye is not zero. In the cataloging, when it is a semicolon, you don't give a colon. <laughs> so thanks uh, for today. Uh, some people want to, I uh, want me to mention their names, but I will not. Uh huh. Okay, now. I can also, oh, I can wish you a good evening.